topic is asymmetric synthesis in the asymmetric synthesis i'll be dealing with uh, stereoselectivity uh, asymmetric induction double dia stereo selection and double asymmetric induction in the before asymmetric synthesis i have dealt with the topics like enantiomeric excess you can go through that methods of uh, determination of enantiomeric excess and optical purity so moving on to stereo Stereoselective reactions are those reactions. In the stereoselective reactions, you have to study definition, classification. Okay. So moving on to definition, what it says: the uh, chemical reaction which produces the unequal amounts of the stereomers. Like if you are taking one of the stereomers in that stereomer, and uh, if you are getting the two unequal amounts of the products, like one is your major product that is your eighty percentage, and one more is your twenty percentage. That reaction is called as 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 uh, stereo selective reaction such such reaction is said to display the stereo selectivity that phenomenon what is taking place over there is that phenomenon is known as stereo selectivity if we are seeing here if you will take um, this ethylene molecule okay and then if you will treat it with the lindlas catalyst you can see here there are two in uh, two oh, um, stereomers that is your trans and one is your cis cis is your major product trans is your minor product that means you can take this as your 80 percentage and this as your 20 percentage okay this is uh, the one of the example for your stereo stereo selective reaction moving on to next slide if you'll move on to classification so this stereo selective reactions are classified into two types one is enantio selective and dia stereo selective reaction so in the enantio selective reactions the substrate which is having the enantiotopic units okay you are taking one substrate in which there should be one enantiotopic unit in presence of the chiral reagent whatever the reagent you are using over here like lithium aluminium hydride like that if you use that reagent in presence of that chiral reagent you should result in the two enantiomers unequal amounts of that enantiomers okay so if you will move on to definition the chemical reaction which produces the unequal amount of the in, uh, enantiomers or exclusively one enantiomer is called as your enantio selective reaction the phenomenon which takes place in enantio selective reactions is known as your enantio selectivity okay moving on to examples if you will take this um, this uh, substrate molecule and then if you will treat it with the baker's yeast that is your reagent that time what happens you will result in the s enantiomer okay um, s configuration that is enantiomeric excess is greater than 98 percentage that is your major and then again if you will take uh, this one an uh, oh alcohol thing and then if you will treat it with the minus det sharpless epoxidation condition the oxidation will always whenever you will see the minus det or plus det remember you have to do the epoxidation in the alkene side so if you will do the epoxidation here again you will result in two products one is your beta and then one more is your alpha okay and then the beta product which is over here okay that is your major product and one more is your alpha which is your minor product and then moving on to diastereo selective reaction again you are taking the substrate here remember in presence of chiral or a chiral reagent okay you uh, that will result in two diastereomers the diastereomers should be in unequal amount okay so if you will read over here reactions which produces unequal amounts of diastereomers from single stereomer you are taking one single stereomer you are resulting to unequal diastereomers that is known as diastereo uh, diastereo selective reaction the phenomenon which takes place over here is known as diastereo selectivity here for the reaction spelling is wrong r e a c t i o n not a double i okay that is a typo error and then moving on to next so what are the conditions which has to takes place for the dia stereo selective reactions the first thing is it will be achieved whenever there is a steric hindrance okay and then compared to enantio selectivity dia stereo selectivity reaction that dia stereo selective reactions are easier and then if 
in the diastereo selective reaction if the diastereo isomers are chiral okay if they are chiral if the carbon atom is chiral in nature then only the reactions are asymmetric okay and then if you will see here if you are taking this as an example ethylene molecule and then if you are treating it with the sodium metal in presence of liquid ammonia again you are resulting in two products one is your major and one is your minor trans is your major and cis is your minor okay so here if you will see here the diastereo selective reaction is diastereo selective but it is not asymmetric okay why it is not asymmetric because there is no a chiral atom over here because of that it is not asymmetric moving on to next example if we will take the 4 methyl cyclohexanone and then if we will treat it with the dimethyl uh, um, cuprate lithium cuprate okay in presence of hydrolysis upon hydrolysis what happens you will result in two molecules that is uh, two products will result one is your trans and then cis you are uh, taking this uh, uh, trans as your 98 percentage and cis as your 2 percentage and then moving on to asymmetric induction this is also known as enantio induction which is very important point of uh, your uh, exam point of view so here this has been introduced by the Herman Emil Fisher uh, based on the work on his carbohydrates okay so moving on to definition what it says is the extent of the asymmetry which is induced the asymmetry induced at the prochiral centers okay prochiral centers of the substrate first you are taking the substrate in which the asymmetry is induced in that prochiral uh, center of that substrate either by the chirality of the reagent or by one or more chiral centers which is present in the substrate molecules that is known as asymmetric induction okay you are inducing one of the prochiral you are taking the substrate of the prochiral, cent, uh, prochiral center and you are inducing the chirality of that reagent okay the reagent which is having the chiral atom that chirality you are inducing that one that is known as your asymmetric induction okay and then there are two reactions which I have said enantio selective and diastereo selective right so if the asymmetric induction is uh, taking place in the enantio selective reaction then it will be enantiomeric excess in the reaction like diastereo selective reaction asymmetric induction will be your diastereomeric excess that is your DE always remember DE represents your diastereomeric excess moving on to next slide what is your double diastereo selection okay so here if you will see in the diastereo selective reaction you have studied earlier in that reaction asymmetric induction if you will see the diastereo selective that has to come into picture that asymmetric induction will be your de diastereomeric excess okay that will remain same whether the substrate is enantiomerically pure or it has the racemic mixture which is which has the racemic mixture provided with the reagent which is achiral not chiral it is achiral okay if we will take a situation if we will take a situation in which different reagent is there which is optically pure that will affect to the combination of substrate as well as the reagent which is explained in the example i'll show you so if we are taking the if we will consider a reaction in which the reduction takes place with 2 methyl cyclohexanone when we are taking the 2 methyl cyclohexanone as the substrate and if we will take the reagent as your hydrogen donating reagent like lithium aluminum hydride okay that time what happens ketone will exist in 2 enantiomers like it can exist in S and R forms okay then enantiomers it will exist when that will be reduced with an achiral reagent so you are using the achiral reagent as your lithium aluminum hydride over here so you will result in two diastereomers okay that two diastereo isomers which are formed like trans as well as cis in the trans form again you will have 1s 2s and 1r 2r again in this is form 1r 2s 1s 2s ss will be uh, giving you the diastereomer of sr rs again rr will give you 
RSSR as your diastole tumor. Remember that point. Okay, let's uh, see the example. So, if we are taking the two enantiomers S and R cyclohexenone, we are taking. So, if we will take that methyl cyclohexenone and then if we will treat it with the lithium aluminium hydride. And if you will treat with that, what happens here? The ketone groups gets converted into OH group. Okay. So if you will see here, you will result in two forms. One is your 1S, 2S. Okay. L form. And then again it is 1R, 2S. U form. Okay. And then I will tell you what is L and what is U. And this is your SS and then S, S, S will give you SS. And R, L, RS will give you RS. And then again if you will see here, again if you will take the R enantiomer and then if you will do the uh, treatment with LAH reagent, A chiral reagent, at that time again you will result in two products that is your 1S RS, uh, 1S 2R and then 1R 2R, okay, SR, RR, that is your, uh, whenever RS is there, okay, different, that is your U and then SR, that is all, again U. SS and RR will always represent by L. I will tell you whether it is cis and trans like that. If you will see here, you are considering the situation wherein the substrate is enantiomerically pure. Okay. That is for example, you have taken there as an S ketone. Okay. And resulting, the re uh, and resulting agent is chiral. Either it can be an S or an R. So then if we are taking, if we will take one, one individual reagent and then we will speak about that. So if we will take the R reagent and then the transition state which is formed over here of trans isomer. There I have said you L and U, right? For whenever there is a trans isomer, that time it is represented as L, okay? L, trans isomer L and it can also be represented as SSR, okay? That is your chirality of R reagent being added to the descriptors of that product. Your chirality is added to the descriptors of that product. Similarly, if you will take the S reagent, that transition state which is formed over there of cis isomer. That is cis isomer is always represented by U. That is your SSS. Okay. SSS. Remember SSS. 3S. S cube you can say. And then if you will see here, here we are uh, getting two transition state. Yes, one is from your R reagent and one more is from your S reagent. So that two transition states are diastereomeric in nature. So asymmetric induction will be your diastereomeric excess. That will be different. Okay. So here when S ketone or R ketone is reduced with the reagent of the opposite chirality if you are taking that reagent that will be reduced with the opposite chirality then the diastereomeric excess in each combination of the substrate and the reagent may be considered into two uh, two terms two contributors will be there over here so one due to the inherent inherence of your diastereophase selectivity of the reagent diastereophase selectivity of the reagent one you are selecting the reagent first of diastereophase selectivity of the reagent and another one is substrate. You are selecting the substrate, how the substrate should be, whether the chiral atom should be there or prochiral atom should be there. And your reagent, whether it has to be chiral or achiral. So that two contributors, depending on that two contributors only, reaction is said to be the double asymmetric induction. Okay. That whole phenomena which is taking place over here, that phenomena is known as double asymmetric induction or double diastereo selection. So in such cases what happens, general rule is that the enantiomeric excess value of diastereomers are inversely proportional to diastereo selectivity. Okay, remember EE is uh, EE of diastereomers is inversely proportional to your um, diastereo selectivity 1 by diastereo selectivity you can say that is most more abundant isomer will have lower enantiomeric excess thank you if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment box